Hey, everybody, how you doing? Well, that's good. Welcome to PHLY Flyers presented by Mortgage CS. Check out MortgageCS.com slash PHLY to get your home buying process started today. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. My name is Bill Matz. I'm your director of fun and games for the evening. Joining me today, we have live and in person, Philadelphia's number one hockey beat reporter, Charlie O'Connor, and Broad Street Hockey's own Kelly Hinkle. Um, we're still not over last night's game. And I feel as if I threw a shot at Charlie last night during our Airson debate that he was, and then I did the host thing. It was like, but we're going to move on. So we're going to have the full Airson debate today and he'll have a chance to, uh, rebut and actually, you know, but. get his opinion out there without me and Kelly just making fucking jokes over it. Cause that's all we did last night. Uh, but it was I'm a really sorry. fun post game. If you haven't watched it, I, I suggest you do. It was a good one. But the Flyers lose to the Panthers despite allowing, I mean, 15 shots and really only 14 of them were on the goalie. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. So it leads us to the, uh, regardless of how Stolarz played and like the Flyers needed to do better on offense. Yeah, they got a ton of shots. They probably could have had way more, could have hit the net a little bit more, maybe take advantage of those early power plays. But they created enough shots and chances they should have won this game. They could have. Uh, let's just get to this great goalie debate. Uh, the Airson workload question. There are 10 games left in this season, including one back to back on April 5th and 6th. That's a Friday, Saturday. I believe it's Columbus. And we did this last Buffalo, night. I think. Buffalo and Columbus. It's Buffalo first game yes. and Columbus is a Saturday. So not exactly the highest quality of opponent. Uh, also we've seen how that can go when you, uh, just kind of mark down points on the yeah. schedule. Flyers tend to play up and down to their level of competition somewhat. Like that. But 10 games left, not a huge workload over the final 22 days, three-ish weeks. Yeah. But it's it, it's sizable. I mean, it's sizable. <laughs> it's a normal amount of hockey games it's, for a three-week period. It's not right. as if yeah. they have like three back-to-backs no. in there Fair. is what I'm Fair. saying. Um, a lot of people think, well, you, you can't give Airson all 10. Maybe eight, maybe nine. My contention Bill, is you do. <laughs> my contention is you have to give them all Bill ten the because all twenty of these points matter because the caps are coming. I know that the caps stink. So too does the whole division. Like they're ahead of the Flyers by point zero zero one in terms of points percentage. They have two games in hand and they're two points back. One though, they have one game in hand. They have one is game one? one game in hand, two points back. I believe that's what it is. All I right. think. We have the standings. We can just look at this. We yeah, the Flyers have played 72. Washington has played oh, 70. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Right. So got him. All right, you got me. It's two <laughs> points back. Uh, it's a 563 points percentage versus the Caps, 564. So they're basically tied right now. The but, Flyers- they're, but they are ahead of the the, the wings. Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. So even if they were to drop out of the three we'll spot, the card, they yeah. would still hold the second wild card They spot. would still potentially hold that second wild card spot. I just think... There's no way you can put Felix Sandstrom back in. Mm. You can't do that to the guys. It's throwing the game. You've seen it now. You've started them these last two times, and it's been an utter disaster. Like, well, I don't see how you can do it to them. I mean, last night was an utter disaster. I don't think the I don't think the game before that, which game? That was the Boston game. The six five he, Boston he, game. He gives up a legitimately weak goal at a bad time. However, however. The Flyers didn't necessarily have to be in that position if they didn't stop playing hockey for four minutes at the start of the third period. Absolutely. No, that they could play better in front of him. You also need a goalie to make a stop sometimes. Agreed. And I don't even think he was that bad for a lot of that game. No, you have to it's, it you have to make a stop at that point of the game. It's the pivotal part of the game. It was an awful goal. If they only had was. one shot on goal, that was the only one that mattered. <laughs> like he needed to make a save. It was that one. It yeah. didn't happen. As your team is making a furious comeback against the number one team in the league at that point. They might still be, I don't know. It's been bouncing back and forth between like three teams. But I just don't know how you can put Felix Sandstrom back in net and sell it to the boys. So we talked about this a little bit last night, Charlie, I think before you came on. That, like, I feel like bare minimum, you got to give Felix one start, and that's one of the back-to-backs. Yeah, I I absolutely believe that. The Beej are the second of that weekend. They are hideously bad. They are a bad, bad hockey team. Love that. 
There's no reason why the Flyers forward core can't go out there and win that game for their goaltender. Even if Felix Sandstrom shits the bed, if they can lock it up defensively like they did last night and the goal scorers can actually score goals like they did not do last night, they should win that game. Like, that shouldn't be a problem. I would agree with that. So that should be the one that you mark down as Sandstrom's start. And then I guess maybe you just kind of feel the vibe out from there. Yeah. I, I mean, I would not throw Sandstrom in a game before then, probably. Yeah. I mean, if there's any game I would consider putting him into, it would be probably the Chicago game at the end of this week because it's a busy week. Chicago yeah. also stinks. They stink. Uh, you could probably beat Chicago with a really bad goalie in that too. My thing is, and this is, I guess, my big issue. I'll get into my issue with the workload because I think the workload concerns you are brushing aside as if they don't matter. I'm not brushing them aside. I'm saying it's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay. Well, it's not necessarily a risk I'm willing to take. However, I also want to make the point that, like, I don't think, I think people, and I got this sense on Twitter last night too, that people are looking at the Capitals and, like, the Capitals are scaring the hell out of them. I don't think the Flyers have to go 10-0 and to make the playoffs. No, 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 like, no. Like, I, don't. I don't think this is, like, you can't say, well, every game's a must-win. Like, well, yeah, every game's a must-win in the sense that you'd like to win every game. But I don't think the Capitals are going to win every game. No. I would say, like, I would go, if I have to start Felix Sandstrom, quite honestly, I'm not doing it against Chicago or in that back-to-back -back against a bad team. Start him against the fucking Rangers, the game you're probably going to lose anyway. You have to beat Chicago. You have to beat Montreal. You have to beat these awful teams. Columbus, Buffalo. Those are must-win games to me. It's a fair those point. Those are the points you can't throw away. And putting Felix Sandstrom in those games really decreases your chance of getting those points. Throw them in against the Rangers because you ain't getting the points anyway yeah, in those games. I mean, that's what we said about Boston on Saturday, and they got those points. They did. Uh, it, this is, I would never start Felix Sandstrom. I'm saying in the world in which I have to, <laughs> I'm doing it in the games that you probably won't win because what's the difference? I need to win those games against the bad teams and it will be demoralizing to lose those games. Yes, the Capitals are not good. This could just be the little hot stretch that we saw Buffalo go on, that we saw the Pens go the on. The Islanders when they won six the straight. Islanders, and they immediately lost six straight. And then they straight. all fell off. I think the big difference here is Alex Ovechkin. I have no idea what happened to this man. He had eight goals through 43 games. He got bored. He now has eight goals in the last five. He has 18 in the last 25. The best goal scorer of all time is playing like the best goal scorer of all time. That is a fear of mine, that if he's carrying them to this degree, and it could go away forever. He's 102 years old. He could just stop playing How again like he could just stop playing again you know it's possible but he's been awesome and if he's awesome they're scary to me so here is here is really the reason why i don't want to do this and it really just boils down to the workload you are already giving sam Harrison a lot of games okay so we're going back to because i'm gonna i'm not gonna go back to before the uh before the all-star break because number one that was a weird situation. The Hart stuff was just coming out. Before that point, Arison was essentially in a timeshare with Hart. Once you come out of the All-Star, and then you have a week off. Yeah. So everybody has a chance to reset. Since the All-Star break, Sam Arison has gotten 17 out of 21 starts. Now, he hasn't played in complete games at all of those, because some of them he's gotten pulled. But he's gotten 17 out of 21 starts. That's 81% of the starts. That's a 66 start pace over 82 games. That's a lot. Like that's he's already that's a shit time. already getting a lot of games over this stretch. Looking at last year, the guy who had the most appearances was Connor Hellebuck and UC Soros. They got 64 games all of last season. So right now, since the All-Star break, Sam Harrison has been on a more demanding pace for the past month and a half than Hellebuck and Soros had all last year. That already worries me that you are putting a little bit, like just now, the current status quo already worries me that you are giving Sam Harrison a little too much of a workload. We had that moment when he had those two bad games early in the month. Yeah. And we had conversation on this show. Oh God, is he running out of gas? Then they pull back a little bit. They give, so they gave Sandstrom an extra start in the, uh, in the Boston game in Boston. And we were like, that makes sense. Give him a chance to reset. Give him a chance to catch his breath. He comes back. He plays better. We're all happy. 
Now you're already giving Sam Harrison more starts than you ideally probably would want to because you know your backup goalies aren't very good because Hart's gone. If you do what you are suggesting, which is go into the next 10 games, 10 games and 22 games, planning to give Harrison all 10. Now, as you note, maybe that's not the way it has to be. Maybe Washington falls off. Maybe you're able to play Sandstrom in the final couple of games because you clinch. But if you're going in with the plan that Harrison is going to get 10 out of 10 the rest of the way, including a back-to-back, that means that if that's the way it plays out, that since the All-Star break, Sam Harrison will close out the season with what essentially for two and a half months is a 71 start pace over the course of a full season. The last time, the last time a goalie got (laughs) that pace over a full season was 2015 when it was Braden Holpe at peak Braden Holpe and Jonathan quick, when he was still very much workhorse, Jonathan quick. I would be terrified if you decide to give Harrison that many starts that by the end you are getting these qualities. The, the, the starts you're getting from Sandstrom now, I would be expecting to get these kinds of starts from Airson. And the problem is then you're really screwed because then you have no other choice. It's either get Sandstrom quality starts from Airson or just get Sandstrom quality starts from Sandstrom and then you're fucked. So to me, and then that's not even accounting for the fact that you want to give Airson, who presented presumably could be part of your long-term future, a real chance to flourish in the situation not get injured in this situation i think that is too much to put on airson in my opinion i would rather personally and again we're sucked into the idea of the playoffs mattering a lot because hey it'd be great to make the playoffs it's fun i would be willing to sacrifice the playoffs if it means not to burn out sam airson i would because i don't think the playoffs are that important oh i, th- I think it's important if you've come this far yes. and you've chosen the path they have with yeah. this rebuild to make, I mean, the games matter now. The games matter now. You're That's, playing meaningful games. Already. I just think, I believe you are no longer a rookie. Once you have played playoff hockey, you have now played hockey at the absolute highest level, Stanley cup playoff hockey. That's it. That sort of experience is huge for the guys who haven't been there in a while and the guys who haven't been there ever on this team. I just named most of the roster. I, it's just, it's building importance to me for this team to have a goal and now accomplish it. Yeah. Like, at the beginning of the season, this shit didn't matter. I no, don't care. We're play too six, far in. Play six skaters. They have no goalie. I don't care. Lose every game. Now there's 10 games left. They've been in a playoff spot for like 110 consecutive days. Yeah. Finish the job. And I yeah. don't think you're going to be able to finish the job with Felix Sandstrom. I think the best course of action, play Airson and then hope you clinch before those last two, three games of the year and then put whoever in. <laughs> Sign a college free agent. Don't give a shit. The other guy. Whoever. Like, yeah, the dude from the ECHL. But I guess my, name I still but I guess my thing is, is that if you, are, if you do that, if you are playing Airson every game, you are doing it presumably out of fear that the Capitals are too hot and you can't afford to drop any games because they're rolling. If that's the case, though, if that's why you're doing you run it, into the Caps last then you day. run into the Caps last game of the year and Arison is completely burnt out. Uh. What if he's not completely burnt out? <laughs> what if he thrives in this environment of this, like this Marty Brodeur-esque workload where it's like some goalies and we've seen Charlie lays out the amount of games. It's not as if he's accustomed to this sort of workload. No one is at this point. No, no, there aren't this goalies is, this who just, do this, this anymore. This just isn't what happens this is at a the Roy NHL Halliday level. Halliday level, like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess who doesn't like? No one throws nine complete games in a season anymore. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what we're asking. I just let's see if he can do it. What if he's the? <laughs> I, I, Listen, I, there are good answers here. They're all their backup goalie coming into the season. We are now asking whether he starts eight or nine or ten. To play at like a 65 game pace. That isn't ideal for anyone. No, it's the not. The whole goaltending situation got thrown into upheaval when all the Carter Hart shit unraveled. And I guess you could say maybe they should have seen this coming and had a backup plan. 
They had the opportunity to pick up Niemi. Auntie yeah. Ranta. Yeah. Auntie Ranta. Oh, Ranta. Did I say Niemi last night? Did I you? might have. Maybe you did. And I've made that you've mistake been, you've before, so that was, Kelly. That was your fault that I just talked about. I yeah. thought, it's I Auntie like, Ranta, not was Auntie Niemi. Niemi was the guy here. who beat Lane in the cup yes. yes. Oh, that's I was why driving he, here he today. seared into my brain exactly. forever. I was yeah. driving here today like, did I say Niemi last night? Well, all right. We got to make sure we clarify. Yes, they could have had, I guess, Ranta. Ranta, yeah. Is that the mistake here? Yes. Like, is that the big... You could have had him for nothing. And I see we have a super chat. Yeah, We're going to get yeah, to it. Let, actually, let's, I can't read it. Let's, so let's do it. the super chat when we get into the mailbag. Oh, okay. okay. We'll because it's, it's basically a mailbag question. So let's do that when we get to the mailbag question. Should, like, is, I'm not saying this, oh, Briar should be fired because he didn't pick up a, yeah. But, like, is this maybe his biggest miss thus far? It's a little bit of a miss. And I, it, mostly because, if I remember correctly, Charlie, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. They did the Johnson thing before... Ronto was waived, right? I would have to look at the time frame. I think they were kind of around the same time because they traded for. The, I think uh, I think Ronto was available before. Oh, okay. Because they traded for they traded for Johnson on deadline day. They, oh, that's they right. They made the walk yes, trade yes, on yes. Wednesday, okay. and I think they traded. If I remember correctly, they traded for Johnson on deadline day. I think Ronto was waived either Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So picking up Johnson instead of picking up Ronto, I think was. Briere's. You date. could have done both though, but then they would have had to do the LTIR. They ended up having to do that anyway. Oh, because, that's true. I mean, they're on. You're using LTIR now because they ended up not being able to send Ryan Johansson down to the minors because he's hurt. Mm. So he's still on their roster. So they ended up having to tap in a long-term injured reserve anyway. But presumably they didn't think they, they were didn't going think that. To but yeah, 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 right. They but could see, have. In hindsight, like you should have just not like fucking just do it. The only thing I can think of with Ron, and it's annoying right now because their internet connection isn't good, so I can't actually look at his stats. But if I remember correctly, he is not good. So Ron has been down in the minors, no, and no, he's been playing like crap in the minors good. too. So like maybe, let me put it this way: if the Flyers, and I don't know this one way or the other, but if the Flyers passed on claiming onto Ron because they think, well, we want to give Felix Sandstrom the shot. That was objectively stupid and yeah. wrong. If they pass on Ronta because they scouted his games and Kim Dillaball watched a couple and is like, this guy is so structurally screwed right now. I can't fix him in two weeks. Okay. If we pick him up, he just will be bad for us, just as bad as Santrum will likely be for us as well. Then I at least understand it. That's fair. Maybe also, done. maybe Ronta's just pissed he's in the minors and that's why he's sucking. And if he was in, in the pros, he'd be fine. I don't know. I realize, like, okay, if it's, like, if we are going to make a move and it's pointless, like, let's just... The idea of structurally screwed. Felix Sandstrom looks at times like a rug hockey goalie just throwing himself yeah. willing. I've never... I don't know what he's doing I don't doing know if sometimes. I've ever seen anything like this. Uh, the, I, I, and I hate, like, this pile on Sandstrom. Like, it's not his fault he's not good. Like, it, it, they should have other goalies really. in the system. Hopefully some are coming. We'll have some questions about them coming up so we can once again dispel those possibilities. <laughs> well, I mean, we should discuss the possibility. Discuss. Uh, but we do have a few goalie questions yes, here. Yes, Auntie, that I Auntie get Ronta, to. my internet finally started working. Auntie Ronta has four starts in the AHL for the Chicago Wolves, a uh, not an 861 save percentage, which is real friggin' bad. Not great, though. 872 save percentage in the NHL this year. I am not close enough to the Ronta situation to know if that is a, I don't want to be in the minors, so I'm not even going to bother trying, or if it's a, my game is so off kilter a mess that he might be even worse than Sandstrom. I don't know. The Flyers team save percentage, it might have changed. I heard this on, uh, I want to say maybe Daily Faceoff or Puck Soup last week. Uh, since January 20th, Flyers team save percentage is like 858. Is that good? It's uh, going to be, if that was a full season, it would be the worst by miles in Oops. like history. That's not um, Let's get to some of these questions. Super chat. Another super chat. Another super chat. All right. Oh, what is this one? This say? was not a question. It's just Charlie. Thanks for answering my questions in Discord. You're oh, welcome. Nice. LCJ G Man. You're welcome. I love it. All right. Let's get to the uh, nice first to join Discord, become a diehard. Let's get to the first goalie question uh, in the mailbag from Devon. Are the Flyers even allowed to make a move at goalie? Aren't they out of post deadline call ups already? Now, so, so my, this is, so can my, they bring up, can they sweep, swap out Peterson for Sandstrom and see if that works? I again? don't think they can. I think they're out. They, right? I, I, my understanding is that they have used up all four. 
Right now, Sandstrom actually isn't even up on a post-deadline call. He's up on an emergency, emergency right? recall. Yeah. Was kind of, no well, it was a way for them to sort of get around, mm -hmm. you know, get a sort of an extra fifth call up without having to use one of them because they only had the one goalie. I believe they are out of call-ups. So they really don't have the ability at this point to swap him and Peterson. They made the choice that it's going to be, un unless, I guess in theory, they could bring Felix Sandstrom into Danny Breer's office. Danny's got a hammer, and he's like, you're hurt. Say yeah. you're <laughs> Maybe just slap, just slap him. <laughs> but like beyond that, they he can't bring up that. another goalie, like at least one who is with the Phantoms right now, um, to replace Sandstrom. They are kind of stuck with Sandstrom as their backup in here now. To I be will... fair, that was the right choice because yeah. Peterson was yeah, somehow yeah. worse. Yeah, I mean, it's always like grass is greener yeah. on the other side. Like, does anybody remember Cal Peterson's last game? No, like that, thing, real bad. that Penguins game. Real bad. I have lived through all of the goalies, so maybe goalies. in history. Yeah. Um, that Seven Penguins years. game was the worst I've ever seen. Just every shot went in. Yeah, I don't know if he made a save. It was remarkable. Uh, can we just... I don't know if anyone has an answer to this. After the trade deadline, you're coming down the stretch. Uh, the games get more physical. You're heading to the playoffs. Why, at a time of the year when, like, everyone's hurt, do they limit the call? Like, that seems yeah, dumb that to me. Rule. Well, so the reason why they do it is because... And this is just the way the CBA works. It's because you no longer have a roster limit anymore in terms of players before the trade deadline you can't go over 23 guys on your nhl roster after the trade deadline your roster can be as large as you possibly want it if you theoretically you can fit it under the cap you can do it but the restriction then becomes you can't just call up your entire ahl team you can only call up a certain amount of guys because in theory then as long as you can fit it under the cap you could if that rule didn't exist you could in theory have 35 guys on your NHL team if you have space under the cap. This allows for the NHL not to have teams with truly like a second team's worth of guys skating with their NHL They club. wouldn't fit on the bench, Charles. It, it seems dumb to me. I'm just saying that's <laughs> I, the reason. I, 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 I get what you're saying. You didn't make the rule. Make it like 10. I think it's dumb. Like, Four isn't I, enough. I just these are our players. They're all of our guys. We yeah. pay them. The way the way they get around it is the emergency recall. Okay. Where if you really need a guy, you can call him up on emergency, but you can't just stack your NHL lineup with a bunch of AHLers Career and you can fit them all under the cap. Yeah. Okay. We're like twenty two minutes in, so I gotta get a read in here. Hey, and it is actually one I'm very excited about. You've uh, been seeing the Olipop fridge on set for a few weeks now. They've officially launched at Wawa, so that means we're going to start. They've officially launched with us, and now my Wawa has, I'm so bad has at the mirror, pizza. Wawa has pizza sticker is no longer you know, uh, meaningless. Yeah, mm -hmm. get, get your pizza at Wawa and some and Olipop. Olipop. What is Olipop? Olipop is the world's first functional soda with a classic soda taste and the benefits of plant-based fiber, prebiotics, and other botanical ingredients to support gut health. Olipop is a new kind of soda with only... Two to five grams of sugar and nine grams of fiber per can. Have you ever looked at how much sugar is in your regular soda? A uh, toxic amount, I would say. That's not the case with Olipop. And Olipop is available online and available in almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including the most recent launch at all Wawa stores. Olipop's debut in Wawa couldn't be more of a match made in heaven. A delicious, healthy drink meets a convenience store. We're, we get everything else for our day. Listen, I've been to Wawa twice already. It's not 3 p.m. Uh, now you can get you, know, you can get your sandwich, your snack at Wawa, and get a tasty soda that won't leave you feeling guilty about drinking a can of poison because that's not what Olipop is. It's actually not horrible for you. And the two flavors they're debuting in Wawa, classic root beer and strawberry vanilla. Now, me personally, I'm more of a traditionalist when it comes to soda. I like my cola. I like my lemon lime, stuff like that. I was amazed at how much I liked the strawberry vanilla. I was like, oh, I, was like, tasty. I don't know. I'm not sure about this one, but I, I took a whole bunch home from the studio one day. I was like, I'll give this a shot. Outstanding. My wife, much more of a root beer fan than me. She wanted to, she wanted to know when we were getting more of it. She had mm -hmm. the root beer. It was like, so we're getting, they sponsor you, right? Like, we're going to get a ton of this root beer. Today, I'm able to say, honey, we live a quarter mile from Wawa. <laughs> you can go right there yes. and get it. So use promo code PHLY20 for 20% off your order, uh, your next order of Olipop. 
The discount only applies to one-time orders, not subscriptions. Olipop is sold online at drinkolipop.com and available in almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including Wawa, plus your Target, your Sprouts, Wegmans, ShopRite, GoPuff, all that stuff. Get it at Wawa, though. Do it. Or buy it online and use code PHLY20 for 20% off. Well, one thing I'm very excited to do once the season's over, because got to gotta stay laser-focused on covering this team as Olipop best. Olipop and rum? I want to try out some some cocktail mixes. All right. Olipop, because the flavors are cool. Yeah. So it then becomes like, okay... We got the strawberry vanilla. What could that mix well with? If I just want you know, if I'm if I'm sitting out on the uh, you know Probably on the back porch, rocked. I want to try some things out. I'm pumped. The, It'll be uh, a nice like thing to do in, in June. You know, after the Flyers win the Stanley Cup, just to celebrate. Yeah, you know, celebrate with some Olipop. Celebrate some Olipop. I'm pumped. No, they have a, a watermelon lime. I really like too. That was like a refreshing, crisp drink. It didn't even feel like soda. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get back to some of the goalie mailbag questions. This one from Sean O. If Kolasov comes over, would he be able to play for the Flyers, or would he have to report to the Phantoms? So this is this is the wild card of the whole thing because we just talked about how because of the the recalls, unless one of Arison or Sandstrom gets hurt, they've already used up the recalls. Peterson is not an option. Not that I think any of us really want him to nah, be an option. All set. Kolasov is a different story. So. Here's the thing with Alexi Kolosov. Kolosov obviously spent the entire year this year in the KHL. However, he's on loan. He's on loan. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. was signed to an ELC. This is the first year of his entry-level contract with the Flyers. It's already been confirmed by Danny Briere in multiple interviews. I believe he did one with Snow the Goal. I think he did another with 97.5, or maybe it was Jones who confirmed it. But they are working towards getting Kolosov to come over before the end of the season. He's got some visa issues, right? I mean, he's coming over from, you know, from Eastern Europe. He played in the KHL. He's Belarusian. So, yes. They don't have a... uh, There's, like, something going on, I read, with their... That that, that was Alex App... Alex Appleyard is based in Europe, so he is speculating off of his personal knowledge of the visa system in European countries. What are those things called? The... Go on. Never mind. I don't... I, yeah, I can't know. possibly the describe cons- what the I'm consulate, thinking. The, yeah, those like, places you, okay, that they always evacuate. Embassy? The embassy. Let's just yes. let's just go with those what? places. Yeah, uh, the, the 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 embassy's like closed or something, so it's a whole thing. I mean, look, yeah. Alex is in Europe. I'm not. I will trust that Alex Appleyard knows what he's talking about when it comes to those things. However, like that is not a confirmed explanation as to why this is slowed down. It's just taking it, some time. But point being is that the Flyers clearly are open to the idea of having Kolosov come over at the end of the year. Now. There is no guarantee that the Flyers have any interest in immediately putting him up in the NHL. However, they could, because he is on an entry-level contract, they could theoretically bring him right over onto the NHL roster and put him in games if they want. That is an option. It would be a way to get around the no call-ups thing because he's not a call-up. He's technically was on like the reserve roster. I believe that would be allowed. Now, the question then becomes, would the Flyers actually do it? Would they be willing to bring a guy over from the KHL and immediately throw him into NHL games with no prep work in the AHL after mis- after being out for a few weeks because the KHL season ended a while ago after going through visa issues in the midst of a playoff race? Would they do it? Angles. Would they do it? What I will say is that when I spoke with Brent Flair, I believe this was in early February when I did my prospect mm-hmm. series for diehards. The The conversation went towards what are your plans for Kolosov? I very much got the impression that they don't want to rush this guy, that they expect him to spend the beginning part of next year in the yeah. AHL. It doesn't seem to line up with their planned approach to his development to just toss him into NHL games in the midst of a playoff race. However, these are the Philadelphia Flyers. They do crazy shit Team all, chaos, the, baby. all the freaking time. So I don't think the possibility can be ruled out entirely. If I had to bet, I don't think they would do it. Terrible but idea. I have learned never to bet against the Flyers doing crazy off the wall shit, which is why I'm not ruling and, out that they might consider it. Mm-mm. And the other it. options are like a, a, a guy who stinks. <laughs> you know, like, we don't know if Kolasov is good or not. We know Felix Sandstrom is it. We'll see how this all works out. I will say, though, like on top of your interview they, uh, that you did and what Danny and everyone has said in public, one of the last times we talked to Jonesy, um, 
just in general, talking about guys' timelines, they believe AHL development time very important yes. for most players. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mishkov ain't gonna play in the AHL, but like most guys probably need some AHL time. They believe that's important. Yes. I've, a goalie, especially coming from coming from a place where it, the rink is twelve feet wide exactly. or whatever it is. Like their entire game is based on angles. Like he's got to learn the angles. So like he I, did. I so his home arena in the KHL was NHL. Oh, is it? Size. Oh, okay. the, the KHL is weird. That. Where like some, it's some like baseball. Some they just have all play different. in international size arenas. But like he still had to play That's a lot of dumb. games on the road where he was playing in KHL arenas. It's going to be an adjustment. Well, maybe I'm changing my entire stance. Though. Personally, I would not play him. I personally probably wouldn't. not. Yeah. I, I would like him if, if he gets over. And here's the other the other thing. I don't think the Flyers know when these visa issues will be resolved. Yeah. I also have a suspicion that the Flyers, given number one, what happened with Fedotov, number two, the fact that they are, you know, a big part of this organization's fu organization's future is whether they can get Mitchkoff to come over. I don't think they want to rock the boat on the Russia front Can't imagine. just no. to get Kolosov over a week early. Don't. I think they are just gonna, you know, be like. Yeah, you know, it, it's like it's like Patrick with his pet rock and SpongeBob, where she's like, "You, bro, here you go, Rocky. You, you, you just go when you want to." Like, I kind of think it's that same thing with the Flyers and this visa process, where they're just like, you know, you guys do the paperwork whenever you want, take cool. as much time as possible. We're we fine. just don't want to ruffle any feathers. I they're think good. if Kolosov can get over here relatively quickly. And Sancher maybe gets one more start and stinks even worse. Who the hell knows? I personally wouldn't do it, but it's the Flyers. You can never rule anything out. All right. Uh, this question from TK for MVP. Uh, and we're going to take this in a different. I don't know if it's just the shtick of, but uh, <laughs> do, you, do you think Arison could end up being the MVP with what he's done as a rookie goaltender and helping this team stay in playoff position for most of the season? Now, obviously, Sam Harrison is not going to win the uh, Hart Trophy. Uh, 56 goalies have made at least 20 starts. Harrison is 38th in save percentage. Uh, 31st of the 44 goalies with at least 25 starts. So probably yeah. not. But yeah, I mean, he's been fine, yeah. especially given the circumstances. Given the circumstances, he's a rookie, all that. He's been, he's been adequate for the most yeah. part. But how about the Bobby Clark Award? No. Team MVP. No. He no. has really stepped up under some pretty okay, ridiculous cool. circumstances. Not nearly the most important player on this team. Not nearly. First of all, it's Travis Konechny. Sorry, it is. Um, but also, like, erson has been fine. Like, did he know he was going to have to play this many games? No. Has he done a, a cromulent job, Kurt, checking out? You know, like, stepping up, doing what he needed to do to, to get the team where it is? Sure. Most valuable? No. What I would say... Maybe top five? What I would say is that I guess it depends on your definition of MVP. I very per strongly. I personally... Because, I mean, this is the case that some, peop some people always make the the off-the-wall contrarian case for MVP. That actually MVP is, you know, if this guy's backup was is this bad, then he's the most valuable player in the league because the drop-off is so large. I don't love that. Because to me, like giving giving Arison the MVP of the team just because Felix Sandstrom sucks, like that's not an award for Arison. You're giving him an award because someone else on the team is yeah. god awful. Like <laughs> that strikes me as an awful reason to give someone an award. I believe that uh, the year Peyton Manning missed <laughs> with the neck injury, he should be awarded the MVP. Exactly. They, these are yeah. the contrarian arguments you get. Well, like they were like the number one seed in the AFC when he played, and the next year they picked first overall. <laughs> Clearly, he's the most well, valuable I, I, player. And I've heard the same arguments. I like, know it's I, ridiculous. You hear the same scattered arguments about Dylan Larkin. That Dylan let that Detroit was playing <laughs> great before Dylan Larkin gets hurt. Dylan Larkin gets hurt. They lose every game. He comes back and they immediately blow out the Islanders. Exo facto, he's the most valuable player he in the league. He might be the most valuable player. <laughs> no, see, that's they the lose when he doesn't play. The, the heart conversation is different from the Bobby Clark or whatever they call yeah. it on the wings conversation. These kinds of arguments make sense to me when we're talking about the heart trophy. Okay. Because it, I still don't think they do. But but I, I, I think I, you I can will, have the conversation. You can have the conversation. Silly. Yeah. That, uh, that in this situation, Dylan Larkin is more valuable 
to the wings than Austin Matthews is to the Leafs. You can have that conversation. Okay. But individual teams, it's just the best player. Sorry. Yeah. It's, yeah. To me, it's connect me. I, yeah. I get where the, where this question's coming from, but yeah, I think I it's. I get it. I think, I think it's, it's an pretty interesting, clearly but ultimately. Nah. He, he's he's going to end with like, he's only going to play half the season. The only yeah. debate I think there was is if, and obviously it's very funny given the events of last week, but if Sean Couturier had kept playing like first half Sean Couturier, yes. I think it would have been a very interesting debate between him yeah. and Connect. Yes. He solved he did. that one. But he did. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's with, do that super We did chat. have a super chat early in the show We that we said, no, I, yeah, oh, yeah, Vince, yeah, Vince, 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 our boss, us. why not us? Sure, Vince, why not us? Maybe yeah, we'll win the Stanley Cup. That makes a great but point. Why not us? There was one from Hunter Moyer earlier I when can't. we were in the midst of the Harrison okay, conversation. I want to get to this yeah, one. Yeah. Sorry, forgot forgot to send in my mailbag question, but here it is. If you get to it, Lawton's passing to me has seemed off. Like he's trying to force pass in bad situations. Can he be moved down the lineup? I mean, that's a question for John Tortorella because, look, I think Lawton has been significantly better, especially since the All-Star break. I think he really turned it on. He get better. He clearly deserved the elevation in the lineup over that, like, let's say, a week into February mm -hmm. through the beginning of March. His play then dropped off in March. However... Over the last four games, he does have he had a goal against Toronto, a goal against Carolina, big goal against Carolina, and then um, and then an assist against Boston. In the end, Scott Lawton is ideally not a top six center. He is being played above his station right now, in part because Sean Gatori is struggling, in part because John Tortorella wants to send a message to Sean Gatori. Uh -huh. I personally would bump Scott Lawton down the lineup now and bump Sean Couturier up. Yes. However, I personally would not have scratched Sean Couturier. No. So this is a weird question because, like, what I would do in this situation is very clearly not what John Tortorella would do in this situation, as he showed last week. But the whole reason why Lawton is high up in the lineup is because Couturier is low in the lineup. And Lawton is going to stay high up in the lineup until John Tortorella decides that Sean Couturier deserves to be elevated back up. If and when that is going to happen, I have no clue. But I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this as well. Yeah, uh, we have a question kind of about when they're going to bump Coots up a little later. But it's, I think it's time to just, and they tried this for what, like a period and a half? A like, peri yeah, period like, against, uh, what game was that? It was like three, four games ago, I think. It was, it was the game right before Kateria got scratched. Yeah. So I guess it was the Boston game. They played him up in the, up on the the top line with Konechny like, for a period, and then once the second period started, he was back down on the floor. Let's put him with two good wingers, like maybe a Tyson Forster. Now I realize Katoria and Forster together. Okay, if you're on the road, uh, I'm putting all my fastest guys on the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like maybe those two can kind of feed off of each other. Get, maybe give them tip it on the other side for some speed and see what happens. Like. Sean Couturier, if they're going to have a chance in the playoffs to not get swept, yes. it's going to be because Sean Couturier is playing in a top six role. Like, that's yeah. just the way. I know he's not playing his best hockey right now. But also. But he's not going to play his best hockey next to fucking Ulu Lixell. Yes. And, and <laughs> also, he's doing what he is supposed to do. He's working his ass off. He's gotten better. I thought he played very well last night. Yeah, you said that. that How you liked long are we going to draw this out to make your fucking point? He like, has it's to annoying. be annoying until you get another center. Like twenty minutes of Morgan Frost is not the answer here. Yeah. With seventeen minutes of Scott Walton behind it, like this is that's not going to work. Yeah, this is your captain. <laughs> He's a grown ass man. You don't need to do the thing where you wait for him to come and yell at you until you respect him again. Like knock it off, put him in a place to succeed. And stop acting like he sucks because he doesn't. No one thinks he does. It's just you, bud. Like, knock it off. Yeah. I, Analysis. Thank you. That's, Love that guy. It's really just, <laughs> it's time to just see. Yeah. And maybe there. You, you did it. Okay. We maybe all there's it. a little more behind the scenes with how banged up or how out of gas he is where it's like, I can't trust him for more than 11 minutes. It's well, like, well, then. Say that, dude. That's like. I need more out of him isn't the answer then. It's, listen, the dude missed a year and a half, almost yeah. two full seasons. Uh, he hasn't played a full year since he was 26. He's 31. He's out of gas. Yeah. Like, tell us that Yeah, then. say he needs rest. Don't say he stinks. These All right, are two let's different get the, things. Uh, let's get the last goalie question in before we move on to some other stuff. So it's from Ben questions. Branscom. Uh, I'm sure this will be asked till I die, but nevertheless... Do the Flyers hold out hopes for the prospects in net for the upcoming season next year, 
Or do you go out and acquire a veteran goalie in the offseason or heck, even both? They have to. No, it's gonna be Airson yeah. and sign a dude. Stolars, a Talbot. A Talbot's a kind of worked his way up in the starter, but like one of those types yes. of backups yeah. where it could be a 50-50 if it has to be, yes. but a veteran who isn't gonna straight suck in case you have a situation like this where you need a vet and you don't right now. I, th I think that's the move. Because I think this question, it positions it more as hold out hope for the prospects. If you really break down the prospects, Kolosov, what right? this question is asking is Kolos. call us on. Yeah. Because yeah. Zavragan ain't coming. Zavragan ain't coming. Bjarnson's Carson still in Car Carson Bjarnason has one more year before he is obligated to turn pro, you know, he, before he hits 20. He's in juniors right now. And... While he had a decent year with the Brandon Wee Kings in the WHL. In yeah, he's a junior's guy. Yeah. He had a decent year with Brandon Wee Kings. He did not play well enough that he will come into camp with any chance at all no. to make the team out of camp. So really, this is, do you trust Kolosov to jump in as a backup immediately coming over from the KHL? Or do you want the Flyers gone and get a backup? Everything I've heard in my conversations with people in the organization imply that even if Kolosov were to have the greatest camp ever, they would still prefer yeah. him to start out in the AHL and earn his way up, which tells me that they are going to be in the market for a decent backup goalie in the offseason this summer, which I think is the right move yes. because Erson was thrown to the Wolves this year mm -hmm. with really no other option because of the heart situation. Yes. If, like, right now, I do not blame the Flyers at all for being in this position other than the fact that, like, maybe you could have picked up Ronta. But... That was because the heart situation was unpredictable. You didn't know how it was going to go. If they go into next season in a similar situation where it's like, well, it's Erson and then a bunch of question marks yeah. below him, that's on the Flyers. Yes. That's their mistake because they have a whole summer now to address the, like, we don't want to overwork Sam Erson problem. They have to go out and find a way to address it, whether that's trading for a guy, like maybe you could get a an overpaid goalie and pick up an extra draft pick for him. So stockpile the assets, nice. like that's an option. Or maybe you go out and you sign somebody. But either way, I think you have to get a, not like a guy to push Arison down to number two. I'm not saying go out and no, trade no. for a stud or sign a big guy or whatever, but you have to get a solid enough guy who can play 35, 40 games if he has to. You were having a conversation I saw on Twitter last night, mostly about, you know, should have kept Anthony Stolar's type of situation. And you mentioned how it was clear that the Flyers wanted a goalie dad for Carter Hart. And I think this is a fine opportunity for them to get a goalie dad for Sam Erickson that can kind of help him refine his game, take some of the pressure off, like, Start a few in a row if Brian necessary. Elliott, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just like a, a steady enough veteran goaltender who can help Arison come along a little bit because, as you said, this wasn't supposed to be the year that Sam Arison was the starter. It's not where he's supposed to be. So get a guy who can help us turn Arison into what we hope he can be because I still, I think right now it's still kind of like up in the air if Arison is the solution to goalie when the flyers are a contender i mean i like the idea and this was something that came up in our discord today i like the idea of at the very least being in on anthony stola yeah, he's a free agent he's a really good backup he, Still has, big. he has turned himself into a damn good backup he will probably cost more yes. than most backups will in yes. free agency you may have to give him an extra year. you may have to give him more money than you would ideally like but it's worth remembering, you got Sam Harrison on a really friggin' cheap deal. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can afford to splurge a little bit to make Harrison's job and his development over yes. the next couple of years as smooth as possible. Agreed. They obviously have had Anthony Stolarz in the building. They know the type of person he is. I've never heard anything that he's an asshole. He's from here. Did he's you know he's from here. He's from yeah. the area. I've never heard that Anthony Stolarz is an asshole. He never seemed like an asshole to me. But you have firsthand information yeah. about who he is. He would be an intriguing option for me in free agency if they don't go the trade route to give Sam Harrison some much needed support for next season. Yeah, like the uh, having Harrison, I think at like one seven five or something for the next two years, it's pretty one, big. One point five, one five, something like something that. Late. It's, it's sub two, yeah. sub two yes. for next year and the following season. That's huge. Uh, it would be the most flyer shit ever, though, to like have had Stolars in the building. And That's then what we do go, here. yeah, we don't really need this guy. And now 
you're the team that signs him to the big ticket. That's yeah. what and we I'm do. not saying like a Briz it's, Gallo. It is what ticket. the Flyers do. Like yeah. that's not what I'm. But like. A pretty damn good, you know, tandem goalie contract, you would assume. It would just be very flyers. Sam Harrison Sam has a $1.45 million. 145. So what very, one very favorable cap yes. it for the next two seasons. All right. Uh, what else is favorable? It's the Game Time app. Uh, listen, man, I know I tell you about Game Time all the time, but they are now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which meet, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer and the closer it gets to first pitch. And you know, I tell you all the time, Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals with killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You know about the last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the flash deals save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the game, with the game time app for a limited time. All users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's get to some uh, some of the playoff odds stuff, uh, mostly because I had Bryn make these graphics and I want <laughs> to use them. But we look as where the Flyers sit right now. I realize I have been a little dramatic you? about the, uh, the Caps catching them. But you look at the money puck, and I used money puck because uh, I like the color wheel. I find it fun. Uh, you look at their odds right now. They're at I think eighty seven percent. We have a, a zoomed in version as well of the uh, of look yeah just the, just the division. Money puck has the flyers eighty seven point two to make, and the caps are sub fifty eight. Think that's his fifty seven point nine. So losers a fairly yeah. fairly decent yeah. like. Uh, advantage in terms of just the odds via money puck there. Mm -hmm. And there is a scenario where both teams get in. If there the, is. the Red Wings get pushed out. Considering considering the possibility of the wild card, I think that's why both teams are well above 50 there because they both have two opportunities. Right. The Red Wings really only have the one. Right. It's the second wild card spot. Yeah, they're not uh, the Lightning the are at like... The Lightning are in a wild card spot, and I think I saw their odds at like ninety eight point six percent or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't think anybody like absolutely no, insane. No one believes the, the Lightning are missing. And the that took no modeling. It's just like yeah, no shit. Oh yeah, right. the, the Lightning right. have this one. Right. They're in. Uh, the yeah. Lightning have this one, and who gets the second? Yeah, exactly. You know? yes. uh, but you look at the standings, and they are close. Like this thing is incredibly tight right now. I. This is why, I, like, I just don't want to let off the gas. No, you can't. I want to get this team in. They have earned getting in. They have no defensemen left. They're starting their number four goalie sometimes. Like, their captain is on the fourth line. The coach has lost his mind. Like, every, I mean, he's just himself. He yeah. didn't lose anything. He's yeah. just being John that, Tortorella. That, that, that mind was yeah. long. He's, he's, off. But he's, like, making his own memes he's being now. Like, extra he's, a, Tortorella. he's a great gif just walking away from the podium yeah. instead of answering questions about Field Sanders. He Sanskrit. is kind of like a living gif. He is a living gif. Yeah. Uh, the middle finger, like this yeah. one now. Like, he's the best. But you look at these standings, it's so incredibly tight. I'm confident they get in, though. What say everyone else? I'm, I am confident, but like you, I don't think you can just casually dismiss the idea that they miss. No, it's because possible. Because they definitely could. If they start dropping games left and right because they're playing down to shitty teams or things just start to fall apart and Alex Ovechkin keeps deciding that he's scoring goals now, like that's it for them. They're done. Like That, that color wheel could change very quickly within like three or four games. So I am confident, but also I know that like they can't fuck around. Like they, they got to keep it going. I, it's worth noting that the money puck model is the most optimistic about the Flyers. Now, all the models are optimistic. Hence my use of it. <laughs> but, but it's fair to say that they are the highest on the Flyers playoff odds. If you look at the odds on the athletic uh, from Dom's model, he has the Flyers at 81% likelihood of making the playoffs. And if you look at the odds from Michael Blake McCurdy's model at hockeybiz.com, he has the Flyers at 74%. So 
both good, certainly significantly above a coin flip, but Money Puck may be maybe a bit too optimistic about the Flyers' chances, which make it close to a certainty. I guess 87% isn't a certainty, but I mean, we're getting into, we're, we're coming up on B plus territory here. Whereas the other ones are more in C territory. Micah told me 80 in the DMs. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking at entering March 25th. It says 74%. I rounded up. Yeah. He gave yeah. us six points for vibes. Yeah. Love the vibes. Yeah. And honestly, as we know, in life, all things are 50 50. Exactly. Right. Things I, either happen or they don't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, before we go on, I don't know how I'm going to transition to the bagels. Uh, but we got to talk about bagels and company. It's probably a good idea to do this one again because it's one of the reads I just lay off my ass off Sorry. through last night. That was my uh, it, was all, it was both of us. Listen, a couple of things you got to know about bagels and company. First, best Brooklyn style bagels made right here with Philly Love. Huge bagels and a huge selection of them. 15 to 20. 15 to 20 different types to choose from daily. When you have that many bagels, you want a big cream cheese selection. Why wouldn't you? 30 different flavors of cream cheese available at Bagels & Company. And the most important thing you need to know about Bagels & Co. An affordable brand. You get a lot of food for cheap, and that includes the coffee. The coffee will not break the bank, and it is damn good. So for the best Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philly, Head to thebagelsandco.com slash store dash locator to find the nearest Bagels & Co. near you. Uh, I want to get to some of these playoff-related mailbag this questions. This first one's a really good question. It is. I like it. Uh, I found it. I, I, I know what my answer is going to be. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. From Chasing the Puck, a uh, pretty frequent question asker here on Mailbag Mondays, if you could only have one of Drysdale or Risto, both say at around 80%. You know, they're, they're back. They're not all the way back, but they can play. If you could only have one of them for the playoffs this season, which do you want? Risto. Yeah, I'm I'm going with Risto. I am on Risto as well. It's all Risto. Okay, so here's why. Not even just because like I, I need to see need to see playoff, playoff Risto. Risto. Like that's not the only reason. Risto Linen has gotten markedly better. Like without question, as someone who was very skeptical skeptical of him from the jump, he's gotten better. You know what? Rasmus Ristolainen at 80% looks like. Jamie Drysdale for us is still a little bit of an unknown quantity. And in the playoffs, I don't need that shit. Like, I have a lot of faith in this kid. I think he's probably going to turn into something good. I think if anyone's going to turn him into something good, it's Bradshaw. Cool. But right now, like, I know what I'm getting with Rasmus Ristolainen. And that's what, I like, easy choice for me. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's it's two things. Number one, if we are assuming the premise of this question on every level that you're not getting either of these guys back at hundred percent. You're getting both yeah. of them back at around 80. Jamie Drysdale's game in my mind is so much more centered around his athleticism mm. and around his physical abilities that I am worried <laughs> that Jamie without all of that is going to be really ineffective. That's fair. Whereas Risto, I think can Number one, we've joked about it for years, playoff Risto. I think his I need to see it. His, I, number one, I do need to see it. But also, I think that Ristolainen's limitations at 80% probably can be masked a little bit yeah. more in the playoffs yeah. when you could just be, you're allowed to clutch smash. and grab yeah. and smash and just do smash all that dudes, stuff. Yeah. Whereas Drysdale, I think his limitations would be even more apparent yeah. given the fact that he's not 100%. The other thing, and this speaks to what you were saying, Kelly, about Risto playing well. I'm going to give you, like, for years, I ripped on Ristolainen in large part because his underlying numbers were god-awful terrible. He was bad. He was, like, there's he was no bad. getting around it. People like to pretend that, like, people were just shitting on Risto for no reason. He was actively bad. Ask any Buffalo Sabres fan. Yes. They will tell you. Exactly. He stunk. But this season, okay, if we're looking at expected goals for percentage, so the percentage of expected goals that the Flyers get when he is on the ice versus all the expected goals, Rise to the line in this season, the Flyers have collected almost 57% of the expected goals with Ristolainen on the ice. Now, anything over 50% Not is bad. pretty good. Anything over 55%, very good. He's at around 57%. That's real freaking good. Yes. Jamie Drysdale, on the other hand, with the Flyers, he's at 42%. Ristolainen yeah. and Drysdale, comparing the two, how they played this season, just this season, I think Jamie Drysdale's ceiling is significantly higher than Rise to But... Drysdale, coming off of an injury plague season last year, didn't play much, 
Got a slow, got a, a tough start. I think he probably was playing through something, even when he was playing with the Flyers, was getting used to a new system, is still young, still is in need of a lot of remedial development. He wasn't that good for the Flyers this year. Wrist line was a lot better. So I would rather get back the defenseman who was better than the guy who was worse. That makes sense. I have, uh, following up, uh, we all have the same answer. One, I need to see playoff Risto. This is like when you stick with a TV series, even when it gets bad, the yes. last That few, is a really good like, point, yeah. I just Game need to see how it ends. Yeah. I need to see we the last chapter. It. I need to finish this yeah. book here. I think that, would have, that was me with like Prison Break. F- fantastic first <laughs> season. Second season was good. By the end, it was just like, well, shit. Like, I care too much about these characters yeah. not to see how this ends. I need to even know. If, even yeah, if the storylines are utterly ridiculous. Weeds. Even for that show. Weeds. Oh, God, Dexter. So I just needed to see how it ended. Yeah. Walking um, dead. Two, you know how the playoffs are played. If I am a coach opposing the Flyers and Jamie Drysdale with two significant shoulder injuries is yeah. out there. Oh, you're beating the fuck I'm out of I'm dumping it into his corner every yeah. fucking time. Every time. You're not I'm wrong. So, you're like, I, uh, go hit him. Like, just treat yeah. him like yeah. Hemo Teeman. And we are hitting him. We are dumping and chasing and hitting him every time he's out there. Yeah. And he ain't going to finish the series. No. Like, that's just not. And I don't need Drysdale getting hurt. I need him at 100% next year. And I need to see Risto. So that's the, only, that. the only reason why they might not do that, and this is like me piling a little bit on Jamie Drysdale, the only reason why teams might not do that for Drysdale is because the coach might look at it and say, I want Drysdale want in the series yeah. because when he was on the ice for the Flyers this season at 5-on-5, five five, the opponent scored 12 goals and the Flyers scored three. They might want to keep him in the series. That could be. Also, the, his replacement will be... 90 year old Mark Stahl. So, like, well, that's all. That's a good, yeah. good well, point. Good point. Just saying. Good point. Uh, <laughs> before we get a couple more in, let me tell you about Coors Light. Ooh. I think with the piling on of Field Sandstrom, with the piling on of Jamie Drysdale in this latest segment, maybe we just need to chill. This team drives us nuts. We get fired up about it. I just need to chill sometimes. And there's no better way to chill than with an ice cold Coors Light. So, whether you're Freaking out about goaltenders, injuries, whatever it might be, the standings, you know, the odds. Freaking odds. I love it. Stuff that Never tell me matter. the odds. <laughs> <laughs> you need to find the Blue Mountains in your fridge and enjoy a beer as cold as the Rockies. Because when everything around surrounding your favorite hockey team is on fire, sometimes you just got to chill. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light, get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Bill, I, I will have you know, you are extremely chill and calm and rational all the time. It's you, It's because of the Coors Light. Okay. It's because honestly. of the Coors Light. I've, I love it. I've numbed myself <laughs> with the Coors Light. Let's try to get a couple more in uh, before we, we wrap time. up We started today. a little late. Yeah, yeah, we started. It was like 06, so we'll get a few in today. Um, let's go to Nick Hankins. He wants an update on the D. Will any make it back for the playoffs? And if they do, I know. <laughs> Kelly just couldn't help herself. I know. <laughs> I stopped myself. I know. Because it's your show. Will any of the D make it back for the playoffs? Will they improve our defense? Or will being rusty be an issue? Sometimes you got that rusty D. <laughs> it's a big you're shortage. Sure, you're just torturing Kelly shortage now. Shortage of D. <laughs> um, do you think, like... Have we heard anything about the injured okay, defenseman so, lately? So I can give you an update. Oh, okay. We did see <laughs> Jamie, Jamie Drysdale and Rasmus Line and Skate. Um, the last day the Flyers practiced, it was sometime midway through last week. They really haven't practiced much, but it was the one day they have been skating on their own. I am not sure if Nick Sealer has been. But I can tell you that he was walking around with a walking boot on at Is the there a carnival. Picture? I did not take a picture. You just have to take my word for it. I did not take a picture of him I mean, with a walking boot. He had to take boot. his word for it in the picture. So. But he had a walking boot. So <laughs> it seems like Ristolainen and Drysdale are making progress. That's the good. fact that they are skating, and they were skating pretty hard out there um, on the secondary ice rink. They're not skating with the team, but it's possible. The Flyers have not yet provided any update in terms of you know changing them from week to week. But they're making progress. Nick Sealer is one of those guys, like one of the reasons why they love him so much. The minute he can like walk, put like even when the minute he can fit his foot into a skate, he's going to be begging to come back. So while it seems like he might be further away, maybe he won't need as much rehab time as those other guys because number one, he hasn't been out as long. Number two, he's Nick freaking Sealer. I mean, the guy has no fear. 
So he's gonna fight clearly. his foot. Yeah. So yeah. we'll right. so we'll see. But I don't get the sense that any of their returns are immediately imminent, mm. and that like they're gonna pop up and play tomorrow. But it does seem like, at the very least, Drysdale and Risto are making some progress, which is a good sign, yeah, number one, good. for the team. But it's also a good sign just for them. I mean, like, there's 10 games left. Next week is April. Yep. I, sure is. I feel like we should have one of them back. By now. It would be nice. But, yeah, it is, it's the Flyers. This is the one area in which they're not getting the benefit of the doubt from me. Like, I have given, I think, Danny... And Jonesy and Torts and the whole crew, like, kind of a clean slate this season. The injury stuff, I mean, it's and granted, guys. granted, like, Risto is, we've seen this before with him through multiple regimes. Yeah. They, he, maybe he just doesn't give them any information, so they don't have it. I don't know. But, like, I, we were told he was day to day, and then he was on IR, and no one's heard his name in months now. It, like, how long has he been out? I can't. Since I, February. I, I forget he's on the team sometimes. All the time. I, it's just very. He odd. showed up for picture day. He did. He at least he's there for picture day. <laughs> That's important. Was Ryan Ellis there? <laughs> no. I, not I don't there. know. Him. Um, this is a good one from our pal, Notorious Pig. When the Flyers question. clinch a playoff spot, will Charlie wear the dog mask? Sure. Yes. <laughs> I'll wear the dog mask. All right. You heard it. That's act- that's outstanding. Um, right I went into a freaking dunk tank. I'll wear a dog mask. That's great. It's good stuff. It seems hot uh, people just want honest. people expect the shenanigans from me, Charlie. They want shenanigans. I will from say you. we will have to disinfect the thing because when it's just you, you're all, you're only breathing your own what germs you back in. Me. I, I'd like you know. I would, uh, we'll bring in yeah. some of that uh, yeah. misting that Clorox mist. For just, you. just saying. Uh, let's let's get to one more just straight mailbag question. Those are the playoff and defense ones. Let's get to uh, Flyers fan 39. I think this one's pretty interesting. Do you think Atkinson is done for the se- done for the season, assuming no injury, or do they try to get him in for a couple of games against lower tier opponents? That Columbus one sticks out to me personally. Uh, mm. Also, what do you think our top line is against the Rangers? I feel like you need 14 out there yes. for a lot of that one. So let's start with Atkinson. You think he gets back in? <sighs> It shouldn't. If there's no injuries, maybe not. And the reason I say that is because, like, Brink's playing better. He scored a goal last night, only goal of the game. And Lixell's showing something. I don't think he has earned a spot back in the lineup unless guys start getting hurt. If guys start getting hurt, then, yeah, you bring Atkinson back probable, in. Which is probable, Yeah, it's, it's hockey. It's a tough sport. But I think they are in the mode right now where it's it's all hands on deck. We're playing the best guys. Now that we we finished the Couturier games, I don't think they're going to pull Brink or Lixell out of the lineup unless either of those guys falls off a cliff and gives them a reason to. Yeah. I feel bad for Cam Atkinson. I really do. He worked his ass off to come back. There were some stretches this season where you're like, hey, maybe he's getting it back. You know, they scratch him the one time, comes back, starts producing a little bit. I don't know if like this isn't the time of the year for charity. And I feel mm-hmm. bad for the guy because I really like him. But he has been not, I'm trying to say this in as nice a way as possible. Like he's made no impact on games for like a month before these scratches. It's not even like he was just not scoring, but making plays. There were times where I didn't even realize that he was playing. No, there was a point where it was like, man, he's getting all these breakaways. He's getting shots. If the puck just starts to go in, it's fine. But it never does. That went away. Yeah. And uh, Cam Atkinson has been a lot of fun to watch for this team. Yeah. And when they made that trade with Jake, I think it was to mix up the locker room. I think he was a good addition. I wonder if there's a future in coaching. Like, if this team loses one of its assistants. um, The reason why I don't think that's going to happen is because I think... He's got another year in his contract, Not even that. I just think Atkinson and his family want to go back to Columbus. Always have in their head they're going back to Columbus. I can see him as an assistant in Columbus. All right. That could happen. Well, let's bring Columbus here. We got Tortorella. (laughs) We got Atkinson. It's basically that. Um, Now, the Couturier end of this. We talked about it a bit, but, like, the Rangers game coming up, that's a big one. Then you have a little... A little respite there in the schedule, but the Islanders on April 1st is big. A few games at the end of the season. Devils, especially that last one against the Caps, maybe. You need your top guys, and I realize he hasn't been that, but he is one of you. He's the highest paid player in the team. You need your top guys to be your top guys this time of the year. 
I think he at least needs the opportunity for yes. more than more than six minutes of one period. You yeah, know, that's my thing. I think you at least need to give him the opportunity to show you that he can still be that guy. And I, I mean, like he can. There's there's no reason to believe that he can't be the Sean Couturier that he was at the start of the season, or at least eighty percent of the Sean Couturier that he was at the start of the season. And that against top end talent is like you need that you can't it's just not playing him in those minutes against good teams is just spiteful like there's no logical reason why you would do it there's no one better to put there so if you're not doing it you're just doing it because you're being like obstinate or something like it's it it just doesn't make any sense to me I don't think they are going to use him on the top line against the Rangers because I think John Torrell has made it abundantly clear that Sean Gatturi is going to have to earn his way back up. And the Ryan lineup. Paling is our top line center. He really likes Ryan Paling, man. Loves I mean, everybody guy. does, but like Ryan Paling can't do what Sean Gatturi could do at his best. True. Sean Gatturi, however, isn't at his best right now. Not right now. Not right now. No. I'm but just. Also, not I just like. I'm just saying that like being put in a position to get there. You're not either. wrong. That said, it's not like Lixell and Cates are are. Delorier. No, they're not terrible. They're yeah. not Deloria. No. Like they can make plays. They can score some points. So have eleven minutes though. True. True. I'm just saying. I think Atari is going to have to deliver a game where he scores a goal. You know, gets up on the scoreboard. I know he's not getting the best minutes to do it, but guess what? Fort Liars score all the time. Yeah. It happens. I think he's going to need to have a game like that before Tortorella just hands him back the first line role because I think like Tortorella made a statement last week scratching Sean Gatterier. If he then just a week later puts him back on the top line, what does that say about the entire point of scratching him in the first place? Like it's just like, oh, I just did this thing and now a week later I changed my mind for like he doesn't have a point yet. He hasn't scored since, since he's been back in the lineup. To me, then it's like, well, then why the fuck did you scratch him if you're just going to a week later put him back on the top line? He's got it. To me, if you do that, something that drastic, you then have to see something drastic from Couturier on the ice in order to elevate him back up into his old spot, not just what well, we're playing the Rangers and who else is going to play against the Banajad. Just no, listen, just I, saying that's the way he's thinking. I don't I know. know if he needs to be 20 minutes again. No, maybe like, uh, like that guy, 15. but I'm looking at, because I'm looking at Frost, Konechny, and Tippett. That's your top line because they've earned it. They've played really, really well. They're very good. I'm together. fine with that. But uh, like we talked about earlier, you know, we have Lawton between Faraby and Brink. Yeah. Well, what if that's pop, just Sean Couturier? Yeah, you pop him like in what there? if the fourth line is Kate's Lawton, Lixell? That's fine. Like I, that makes the most sense to me. Just swap those two. Yeah. Hopefully, just saying, I, don't think that's what do. I don't think it's happening soon. I think it should. I think it could but happen. John soon. Tortorella has his ways. I think it could happen soon if Kateria goes out on Tuesday and scores two goals against the Rangers. Then I think on Thursday against the against the Canadians, he's back with Travis Konechny. I think it's possible that if Sean Kateria scores a goal in the first period, by the third period, he could be back with Travis Konechny. I just think he's going to need to show. John Tortorella, something that isn't just winning a puck battle in order to get that elevation back up in the line. The fucking crossbar last night. I know, right? Seriously. Yeah. Just the, it would have been so nice. That's a that goal if in. it's not a goddamn nine-foot-tall goalie. It's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, do we want to keep going, or is that enough well, for Well, one question we I do, do want to answer, okay. because I, I deal with this so much still. It shocks me how often I deal with Ryan Ellis questions. This like Maybe yeah. this is just a person. We tend to cater... To a that is true. ridiculously hardcore audience. That and is sometimes true. I think maybe we lose. Maybe. Not everyone knows the intricacies of the goddamn CBA because we've been subject to so many different stupid things that over the years. Fair. We've learned them. Um, from Liberty Four Philly podcasts, he says, uh, or she, I don't know. Yeah, so the so Flyers, the put, Flyers yeah. put Ryan Ellis finally on the LTIR. Does this mean they still hope he can recover and play again or not? If so, why hasn't he just retired? So, no. Ryan Ellis, to be clear, is never going to play another hockey game in the NHL or probably anywhere, not even a beer league game ever again. Ryan Ellis functionally is retired. The only reason why he is not retired in reality is because he wants to he get wants paid to get what's paid. left on his contract. Right. Yeah. And if he, if he does formally retire, he relinquishes that money on his own 
why would someone do that? No. Why would someone be like, no, I don't want to make millions of dollars because like it's not fair that I'm getting paid millions of dollars. The last chance in your life that you're ever yes. going to have this opportunity. Like yeah. there is no way that any rational human being would willingly give up that much money no. when they can just sit there, not retire, and get paid that much money. Right. And this is not to be clear. Because I think this gets positioned sometimes with Ryan Ellis, and I honestly feel bad for the guy that like he's stealing money from the Flyers. Oh, that's nonsense. That you know that he just doesn't want to come back. The guy can't even skate anymore. No, you said like you I, saw him at the rink, and someone else is like skating with he's his like kid. teaching his kid how to skate. Yeah, like yeah, it's it's, it's a, that's fucking heartbreaking. It's a really yeah. sad situation. If Ryan Ellis could could skate and could play, he would be playing. He just can't. And you know what? Somebody signed to that contract. It's only fair. Somebody signed him to that contract. The Flyers willingly took on that contract. Mm -hmm. It's only fair they pay him what yeah. they promised to pay him. His, uh, it's this year and three more left on uh, Ellis's contract. It was a uh, what, like seven or eight year deal, 50 mil. He made base salary, total salary this year, seven and a half, uh, six and a half next year, five and a half in 25, 26. Four and a half and twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, so he's got another like sixteen point five million dollars in real money coming to him. He's not. Gonna he's give not just gonna say, yeah. "Oh yeah, I want uh, yeah. to stop annoying Bill when he looks at cap friendly." I'm gonna retire. <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird the way things work in hockey, uh, but it's guaranteed contract just the way she goes. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. All right, side with labor in this house. Get that oh. bag, Ryan Ellis. Exactly. It's not hurting anyone. It's Comcast money. Me. They're fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they're fine. Hey, All they're right. still paying Ilya Brzezgov until 2027. As That's they should. never going to end. <laughs> he earned Hopefully. every penny. He's a delight. Hopefully, that article publishes one day on BroadStreetHockey.com. Oh, if I have to pay to keep the website up with my own money. Just till that day. Just till that it day. It shuts down the following day. Now, hopefully, Broad Street Hockey lasts forever. It's a great place. All right. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, I think that'll do it today for PHLY Flyers. Presented by Mortgage CS. Check out mortgagecs.com slash PHLY to start your home buying process today. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube. Never miss a live show. We'll be back tomorrow for post game uh, at PHLY underscore Flyers on Twitter. PHLY Flyers wherever there are podcasts. That's it. My name is Bill Matz for Charlie O'Connor and Kelly Henkel. Have a great week, Philly. We all city like the mayor. 